So good morning. We are reading the 14 lessons of yogi philosophy and oriental occultism. We are on the second lesson starting the intellect today. We now reach the mental principle which distinguishes man from the brute. The first four principles man shares in common with the lower forms of life. But when the fifth principle begins to unfold, he has reached an important stage of the journey along the path of attainment. He feels his manhood manifesting within him. Now remember there, that there is no violent change or marked transition from the consciousness or the fourth, of the fourth principle into that of the fifth. As we have explained, these principles shade into each other and blend as they do the colors of, a, of the spectrum. As intellect unfolds, it illuminates faintly the fourth principle and endows instinctive life with reason. Simple consciousness shades into self-consciousness. Before the fifth principle dawns fairly, the creature having the four principles well-developed has passions, but no reason. Emotions, but not intellect. Desires, but not, no rationalized will. It is the subject awaiting the monarch, the sleeper awaiting the magic touch of the one who has been sent to awaken him from the enchanter's deep sleep. It is the brute awaiting the coming of that which will transform it into man. In some of the lower animals, the fourth principle has attracted to itself the lowest shading of the fifth principle, and the animal manifests signs of a faint reasoning. On the other hand, in some of the lower forms of man, the Bushman, for example, the fourth principle has scarcely been perceptibly colored by the incoming fifth principle, and the man is scarcely more than a brute. In fact, more of a brute mentally than some of the higher domesticated animals who, having been for many generations in close companionship with man, have been colored by his mental emanations. The first sign of the real unfoldment of the fifth principle, intellect, is the dawning of self-consciousness. In order more fully to understand this, let us consider what consciousness really is. Among the lower animals, there is, a, there is very little of that which we call consciousness. The consciousness of the lower animal form, but it is a little more than mere sensation. Life in the early stages is almost automatic. The mentation is almost entirely along some conscious lines, and the mentation itself is only that which is concerned with the physical life of the animal, the satisfaction of its primitive wants. After a bit, this primitive consciousness developed into what psychologists term simple consciousness. Simple consciousness is an awareness of outside things, a perception and recognition of things other than inner self. The conscious attention is turned outward, the animal or low order of man cannot think of hope, his hopes and fears, his aspirations, his plans, his thoughts, and then compare them with the like thoughts of others of his kind. He cannot turn his gaze inward and speculate upon abstract things. He simply takes things for granted and asks no questions. He does not attempt to find solutions for questions within himself, for he is not aware that such questions exist. With the advent of self-consciousness, man begins to form a con forms a conception of the I. He begins to compare himself with others and to reason about it. He takes mental stock and draws conclusions from what he finds in his mind. He begins to think for himself, to analyze, classify, separate, deduce, etc. As he progresses, he begins to think out things for himself and he passes along new and fresh suggestions to his instinctive mind. He begins to rely upon his own mind rather than blindly accepting that which emanates from the mind of others. He begins to create for himself and he no longer he is no longer a mere mental automaton. And from, mere, from a mere glimmering of conscious intelligence, there has grown the highest intelligence of today. A modern writer forcefully forcibly expresses the growth in the following words. For some hundreds of years upon the general plane of self-consciousness an ascent to the human eye gradually, but from the point of view of cosmic evolution rapid has been made. In a race, large brain, walking erect, gregarious, brutal, but king of all other brutes, man in appearance, but not in fact, was from the highest simple consciousness born the basic 
human faculty self-consciousness and its twin language. From these and what went with these through suffering, toil and war, through bestiality, savagery, barbarism, through slavery, greed, effort, through conquest infinite, through defeats overwhelming, through struggle and unending, through ages of aimless semi-brutal existence, through subsistence on varied, substance on berries and roots, through the use of the casually found stone or stick, through life in deep forests with nuts and seeds and on the shores of waters with mullets, mullets, <laughs> crustians, <laughs> and fish for food through that through the through that greatest perhaps of human victories the domestication and subjugation of fire through the invention and art of bow and arrow through the taming of animals and the breaking of them to labor through the long learning which led to the cultivation of the soil through the adobe brick and the building of houses therefrom through the smelting of metals and the slow birth of the arts, which rest upon these, through the slow making of alphabets and the evolution of the written word, in short, through thousands of centuries of human life, of human aspiration, of human growth, spraying the world of man and woman as it stands before us and with us, with us today, with all its achievements and possessions. Self-consciousness is a thing easy to comprehend but difficult to define. One writer has expressed it well when he says that without self-consciousness, a creature may know, but only by the aid of self-consciousness is it possible for him to know that he knows. And with this unfoldment of the intellect came the beginning of all the wonderful achievements of the human mind of today. But great as are these achievements, these are nothing. These are as nothing to what is yet before the race. From victory on to victory will the intellect progress and its unfoldment as it begins to receive more and more light from the next highest principle, the spiritual mind. It will achieve things as yet undreamed of. And yet, poor mortal, remember, intellect is third from the highest in the scale of the principles of man. There are two principles as much higher than intellect as intellect is higher than the principle below, instinctive mind. Do not make a god of intellect. Do not let the pride of intellect to blind you. The importance of awakening of self-consciousness may be, be, may be more clearly recognized when we tell you that the occult doctrine is that once the self-conscious is awakened into being, once the I, the capital I, has been felt and recognized, the real awakened life of the soul begins. We do not refer to the life that comes after the spiritual awakening. That is still higher stage. But to the mental awakening of the soul to the I consciousness, this is the stage where the baby ego first begins its waking existence. Previous to that, it has slumbered on alive but not conscious of itself. And now the time of labor pains and birth is at hand. The soul has to meet new conditions and has many an obstacle to overcome before it reaches spiritual manhood. Many experiences will it undergo, many trials will it be forced to meet, but still the progress is on and on and on. At times there may be setbacks and it may seem to retrograde, but such obstacles are soon surmounted and the soul takes up its journey again. There is no real going backward on the path. And slow as the progress may seem, each of us is moving steadily forward. We had hoped to be able to reach the subject of the sixth principle spiritual mind in this lesson, but we see that we have not sufficient space at our disposal. So we must defer that most interesting subject as well as that of the seventh principle spirit until the next lesson. We are aware that our students are eager to press forward and we are wasting as little time as possible on the way but there are certain fundamental truths which must be clearly understood before we dare take another step. There are a number of lessons to be drawn from subjects of the instinctive mind and the intellect. And this is as good a place as any in which to consider them. One of those lessons is that the awakening of intellect does not necessarily make the creature a better being in the sense of being good. 
while it is true that an unfolding principle or faculty will give you an upward tendency to man, it is equally true that some men are so closely wrapped in the folds of the animal sheath, so steeped in the material side of things, that the awakened intellect only tends to give them increased powers to gratify their low desires and inclinations. Man, if he chooses, may excel the beast in bestiality. He may descend to the depths of which the beast would never have thought. The beast is governed solely by instinct and his actions so prompted are perfectly natural and proper. And the animal is not blamed for following the impulses of its nature. But man, in whom intellect has unfolded, knows that it is contrary to his highest nature to descend to the level of beasts, yeah, lower by far. He adds to the brute desires the cunning and intelligence which have come to him and deliberately prostitutes his higher principle to the task of carrying out the magnified animal propensities. Very few animals abuse their desire. It is left for some men to do so. The higher the degree of intellect unfolded in a man, the greater the depths of low passions, appetites, and desires possible to him. He actually creates new brute desires, or rather builds edifices of his own upon brute foundations. It is unnecessary for us to state that all occultists know that such a course will bring certain consequences in its train which will result in the soul having to spend many weary years in retracing its steps over the backward road it has trodden. Its progress has been retarded and it has been compelled to retravel the road to freedom in common with the beast-like natures of undeveloped creatures whose proper state of the journey it is having an additional burden in the shape of the horror of consciousness of its surroundings. Whereas its companions have no such consciousness and consequently suffer not. If you can imagine a civilized refined man having to live among Australian Bushmen for many years with the full recollection of what he has lost, you may form a faint idea of the fate in store for one who deliberately sinks in high powers to the accomplishment of low ends and desires. But even for such a soul, there is escape in time let me just see if you want to get a few minutes of meditation and might be a good stopping point yeah i just wanted to make sure there wasn't like one paragraph <laughs> and it is it's just one paragraph and then the second mention. yeah of course let me just finish reading this because i can go late to the other thing let your higher nature be on guard and refuse to be drawn back into the brute life which has been passed through. Keep your gaze upward and let your motto be, motto be forward. The brute nature may exert a pull downward, but the spiritual mind will give you a helping hand and will sustain you if you but trust to it. The intellect is between the two and may be influenced by either or both. Take your choice, O struggling soul. Your help is within you look at it and refuse to be dragged back into the mire of the animal mind. Manifest the I within you and be strong. You are an immortal soul and you are moving on and on and on to still greater things. Peace be yours. Second lesson mantra. I am master of myself. Commit these words to memory and repeat them often, letting the mind dwell upon the thoughts given in our meditation for this month. Remember, always that the I is the highest part of you that has been awakened into consciousness and should to a great extent be master of the animal nature from which you have emerged. I figured there was one paragraph left and I just happened to check and of course and those are like those those instances where it's like I catch the glimmer of like like I knew there was going to be one chapter left, like, but was there one chapter left because I, you know, like the, those type of things. It was like, I saw that there was one chapter left in my head, even though I didn't know. And then I checked and I'm like, yeah, there's one chapter left. So from the first lesson, the mantra was a poem. And today's second lesson mantra is I am master of myself. So if you want to take that with you while you meditate. And then, of course, if anyone wants to share anything. Um, 
it's interesting because I just started this. I was in the park <clears throat> and somebody left a book. I didn't take the book, but I Googled the book on a bench and it was like, own yourself. Yeah, own yourself, it's called. And I borrowed it from the library. <clears throat> and it's, um, it's a woman psychiatrist who went to MIT. She's like super smart. And she, um, she started healing, like she was prescribing medications to people. And then at some point she's like, this isn't really helping people. And she started taking like a more holistic approach without medication. And she found that she was healing people of like all this crazy stuff within a short amount of time by taking this holistic approach. I only got through like the first five pages, but <laughs> <laughs> that's what she said so far. Um, so I think it's just, I think people underestimate the um, like the non-logic side of things, the stuff that we can't explain. I'm a science geek. I love science. And just like the non-logic stuff of things sometimes is just so unexplainable. Yeah. Anyway, like, and I was explaining to, um, well, well, first of all, it's interesting being in the office because you see how much, and now I remember why I don't like going to the office because you see how much people suffer, like, because they're trying to get ahead and like they're like leery eyed and crazy and trying to get things done and trying to get other people to do things for them. And, and then you talk to some people who are like so stressed out, they're on the verge of a mental breakdown. And then I was talking to this one guy whose wife is having a terrible time. And I was like, wow, she should join our morning meditation. Because <laughs> I really think that if I didn't have this and if like I didn't learn so much from this, and in the time of COVID, when like I felt so isolated, like when I had joined, it was like the middle of January, super cold, and I felt like so isolated and like on the verge of being depressed for sure. And it's just like it, this one thing that when I first joined, I was like, "Oh, this is gonna be crazy." <laughs> it's the it's been the best thing that I've done for myself in years. It is crazy, but we're all crazy. That's why we're here. It's, yeah. It's from Alice in Wonderland. We're all, we're all bonkers. <laughs> right. <clears throat> so that's all I wanted to say today. But yeah, I have to, um, I'm not absorbing this text very well. I think I have to read it on my own. It's moving fast. But I'm, ge I'm getting it, but I, I really want to really get it. Yeah. Well, some of the parts I highlighted, this one paragraph, I like this one sentence. Self-consciousness is a thing easy to comprehend, but difficult to define. One writer has expressed it well when he says that without self-consciousness, a creature may know, but only in the aid of self-consciousness, is it possible for him to know that he knows? So that's like that idea we were talking about yesterday. Like if, if you're a cat or a dog or like an animal or anything, you have the instinctive mind, but then you slowly, there isn't like a hard stop and then intellect It like blends together. So like we were talking about the cats having some of this like instinctive mind, but then you have some of the men, man, like human that are at this lower blend too. So you might have like, you in like we we I know I do this like I'm like oh my god you're the cat is smarter than some of the humans like we all know humans where like our dogs and cats are smarter than humans because like <laughs> if you have any brains in your brain and I know that's not a very yogi thing to say but I'm also human and I'm, still <laughs> I'm doing the best I can because <laughs> like I always joke with people at my job you guys know I work at on wall street and like i i always joke with people i'm like i have the most healthy eyes because all i do is eye roll all day long at people <laughs> <laughs> oh pam you're hilarious <laughs> because like, i can see you doing that too i can picture the moment when somebody says something so ridiculous and you're like oh 
Or I just like on you and I'm like, really, really. Oh. But this is what this book is explaining, how we have these different um, stages of my, of. Yeah, of consciousness. Of yeah, well, the, it's the constitution of man. So we start with the physical body and then we have that astral body and then we have the life force, the prana. And then we have, and then it moves to the mental principles. Then we go to our instinctive mind. And now we just talked about the spiritual, uh, not the spiritual, the intellect. And then they'll move on to the other two, spiritual mind and spirit. But yeah. All right. Anyone else have anything? I'll move us into breath and meditation. I yes. think Jackie, the most important yeah. part of it. Whoop. Sorry. Oh, sorry, Jackie. No, no, no. Yeah. Jackie goes and then Lauren goes. <laughs> I think the most important part for me, so from just for the read through of that, that uh, piece, is that not to get stuck in the intellect because I know I do. I, and I'm sometimes resistant to, I mean, I, I haven't read. I haven't read what they're saying what, in the next part, the spiritual principles, but I know that that's where I can sometimes get put up a barrier. Um, less so, I guess, over the last few years than before. Um, but that's where I, you know, I get stuck in the, in the intellect and, and that things um, should be uh, logical and reasonable and, not always letting myself just go uh, to have faith. There you go. Maybe it's faith, but I don't know. Always. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And I've always said I love just randomly. We there was no there was no like path laid out from the books we read, but the way we read them and like reading the Gita before this one was like a nice foundation for me mm. to build that faith practice because it mm. really didn't exist. That was the hardest part of my yoga practice was that part of yoga I, and I missed a lot of it because I yeah feel so um yeah so that's something I have to do a bit more on my own I think yeah at some point you got to put the books down and just be <laughs> that's, that's it I'm interested like my brother is probably the most spiritual person I know so I'll be interested to see him next week when I go back oh home. that's cool yeah yeah because you're going home right I mean you're yeah. going yeah that's awesome I hope I'll be able to see him I know he's been following the COVID rules very strictly my mom said um so maybe he'll come and meet with me in the in the garden oh, that's so nice. <laughs> no, supposed to, for the first time I'm not supposed to see anybody except for just my yeah. parents Ireland Scotland Scotland beautiful yeah. dying to go there is it just you going or is your family going just me okay good and Lauren, what were you going to share? Um, just that actually the, this text really resonates with me because I'm trying to always let go of the ego self. And it's like everything, like every single second of the day, the ego comes out and I'm like, oh my God. When it, whether it's identifying yourself with like how you introduce yourself, you're just, and we're all just like beings. And yesterday I taught a private and, um, I just felt like I didn't even identify the person that I was teaching because he had such a strong like light inside of him that I really like saw him as a light being. And it was just nice. It was like a different way of seeing someone. And I'm like, oh, just seeing him as this energy and me as this energy and stripping all identification away. And that was like a really eye-opening thing. I'm trying to do that more. That's amazing. That's so pretty. Yeah, it's so beautiful. Um, I don't think you connected yesterday, Lauren, but, I, but I, I'm taking a, I'm going to share it again because I, I take this course through the Bhakti Center on the Bhagavad Gita. We're a little over halfway through now. And he shared something that when you said something about like letting go of the ego and he's saying that the Gita, like the one of the major themes of the Gita is that everything is either an opportunity to serve or an expression of gratitude, like every single thing in your life. And I know like when you, when you were talking about like letting go of the I, 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 it's not like about 
me all day long. Like it's the opportunity to serve, whether it's myself or others and expressing gratitude for the moment. But all like going back to what Domenica said to start, like you go into, I, I can speak for this in my own job. Like you go into the city and everybody is me, 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 me. It's like, no one's paying attention. They're all on their phones walking around. Everyone's like ton, like horse with the blinders on. How can I get ahead? How can I make more money? No one's looking for the inner light in themselves. And if you can't see it in you, you're not going to see it in other people. So people, and you know, label everything. It's like immediately judgment city. So yeah, it's it's a tough it's a tough crowd in New York. I guess that's why they say if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think if you can make it there like that, you're you're succeeding. It's like you're just in quicksand. You got yeah. you got to be like doing this work and bringing this work there to spread the light, which is what I'm trying hopefully to do. But yeah, strip that ego. You gotta, you gotta be more like your dogs and cats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> my little dog is at my feet the whole time when we're doing this. It's yeah, just... like how much do you learn from your animal? Like I learned so much from- Right in the moment. Everything's just right in the moment. Right in the moment. And they're not like- not, None of that. He's just right here, right now. Yeah. He's just sitting there recognizing the light in you. And they can go from, the thing that always amazes me about my cat is like one minute she'll go from eating, then she'll go from like, right, she'll cuddle with you and then she's attacking a bug and then she's cuddling. Like she switches, is able to switch from things to things so quickly because they don't really think yeah. about it. They don't get identified with it, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> That's what I find amazing. Yeah, they're just doing what's best for them in that moment. They're li they're living their their yeah. They're expressing their gratitude and they're they're serving you because I I joke like when a cat like my is petting my friend's cat and it's like yeah I'm petting it and I'm serving this cat but at the same time it's serving me because it's very meditative to pet cat and it's supposed to like lower your blood pressure and like calm you down to to do those things. Um, and even all the times, like I would walk Kramer, I, I'm like, yeah, I'm serving him in this moment, but at the same time, he's getting me up and out of bed and around the block and I get to walk and exercise doing this too. So there's a, like, as much as we think we're taking care of them all day in the same moments, we're taking care of ourselves too, because for me, owning an animal is a purposeful experience. It gives me purpose to fill up yeah. its water full every day and it's it's food every day so yeah we I, was, can learn a lot. I was thinking of Kramer, Kramer yesterday for some reason uh -huh. he came into my mind I was like oh hi Kramer <laughs> <laughs> Lauren Kramer was my 18 year old puppy doggy and he passed away in at the end of May and I'm heartbroken but I'm at peace because he's he was very old he was healthy until the end and he would join us in the mornings and and do this with us but I still he would always him. say hi around around this time right before yeah, we meditated he, and sometimes Isabella wanted to see him so we would like put him yeah. on yeah he's a he was my little cutie but um yeah okay so let's do some breath work and, and meditate so sitting up nice and tall and then like I said if you want to bring that mantra in for today I am myself, but letting go of, of the ego I. Ego I is lowercase I. The capital I is that inner light, is that part of you that never goes away. It never dies. It just changes physical body. So trying to, and this is hard. It's not easy, but you just keep trying. Trying to separate yourself from the lowercase I to the big eye. So say you're nice and tall. And don't worry, if you don't know how to do it yet, it's fine. We're all learning, we're all growing. Have faith. <laughs> Taking those long breaths in, long breaths out. 
Bring your right hand to the face, close the right nostril with the thumb, inhale through the left, close left, exhale right, inhale right, close right, exhale left, inhale left, close left, exhale right, inhale right, close right, exhale left, inhale left. Close left, exhale right. Inhale right. Close right, exhale left. Inhale left. Close left, exhale right. Inhale right. Close right, exhale left. You can continue on. You can release the palm if you feel like you're ready. I'm going to set the timer. You settle into your meditation your way. Lauren, do you still need the song? I think maybe I'm uh, too attached to it now. <laughs> no, that's fine. I don't mind this. Um.
Bringing your hands to your heart center. Namaste. Have a beautiful day, everybody. Thank you, Pam.